And welcome back to the Australian Ultimate Championships of 2021. We have the last game of day two. We're here with I-Beam playing off against Ellipsis. And now for the flip. All right, you go. Ready? Oh, it's Unlucky. Uh, we will start. We're going to start up there. All right, we will start on offense. All right. Ryan, you've uh, lost the toss. Yeah. Decided to go O. Oh, what, uh, what's behind the choice there? Well, I was going to pick that end anyway, so it's worked out quite well for us. Um, and we generally just always pick offense. No really reason behind it, we just always have. And how's the tournament been going for I-Beam? Really well. We managed to snag second in our pool, so it looks like we'll be in a quarter against uh, either Canberra or Chile, um, both who we've been managed to, be managed to beat both of them this year. So. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Good luck for the game. Thank Over you to much. you, Chantel. I'm here with Tim uh, from Ellipsis. What are your thoughts on the toss? You did win it. Yeah, uh, always lovely to start off with a win going into the game. Positive vibes, but yeah, we got the upwind end, so great place to start. Awesome. Win the toss, win the game, right? Exactly. How have you found the game so far this tournament? How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, I feel like we're really hitting our straps now, which is good, adjusting to the conditions. It's a bit windier, it's a bit colder than it is in Melbourne at the moment, yeah. so really good to acclimatise and just feel good and ready to go out there and play this game. Awesome. What do you think that your team is going to bring to the field today? It's a lot of defensive intensity, I think. Probably a lot of long throwing as well. So those at home, you know, keep your eyes out for that. Awesome. Thanks you so much for your time. Good luck out there. No worries, Cheers. You. We're going to take a short break and then we're going to head over to our commentators, Simon and Kathy. Ultimate is a non-contact team sport, with seven aside on the field and played with a flying disc. The field is 100 metres long, including 18 metre end zones and is 37 metres wide. A goal is scored by completing a pass in the end zone. Ultimate is self-refereed. Players are responsible for upholding the rules and for resolving fouls and violations themselves. Each point starts with a pull. Teams line up in opposing end zones and the defensive team will throw to the offensive team to start play. After every goal, teams swap ends. The team that scored starts the next point on defense. The disc is moved around the field by throwing it to teammates. Once players have the disc, they set a pivot foot like netball or basketball and can't move from there. Players have 10 seconds to throw the disc. This is counted out loud by the closest defender. An incomplete pass is a turnover, no matter who touched it last. When a foul or violation call is made, players will discuss whether they agree on what happened. If they agree, the call is uncontested and the fouled player retains possession. If they don't agree, the call is contested and play resets to where the last completed pass was. <laughs> if a player anticipates a collision with another player, they can call pick to pause the play. If the pause didn't affect the outcome of a throw, play resumes. If it did affect the outcome, play resets to the last completed pass. First to 15 goals wins the game. If the game clock reaches 100 minutes, time cap is called and the score target is reduced to one more than the current winning score. For example, if the score at time cap is 12-10, the new target score is 13. You can't run the clock down. Teams have to score the last goal to win the game. Welcome back to coverage of the Australian Ultimate Championships live on KO Sports is your weekend KO freebie. Simon Tolbert here with Kathy McGrath. Good to be here Simon. Lovely afternoon here in camp. We have the first of the crossover round games between I-Beam from Newcastle and Ellipsis from Melbourne. And we'll take a quick look at the team lists for each team. I-Beam playing out of Newcastle. Renowned for bringing the short roster and they've got couple of veterans on this team to keep an eye out for. Number five, Tim Lavis. 
number 22, John Greenfield, and number 77, Ryan Davey, will be the, the linchpin of this team's play. Number 56, Chris Hill, the wild card. Just look for his absolutely powerful full field length throws. We'll take a look at the Ellipsis team now, Kathy. Yeah, Ellipsis hailing from Melbourne, a relatively new men's team, although a star-studded lineup that hasn't yet managed to secure a national win. We've got a, quite a huge amount of players here to watch, but if you can keep your eye on number 25, Rob Andrews, you'll see him and number 85, Tom Tullett, along with number nine, Peter Ely, all getting quite a lot of disc time and really controlling the game. It should be great, Simon. A number of Australian representatives, current and former, and all age groups on this team. Both teams finished second in their pool after pool play, so... And what does this game mean for them, Simon? So this is basically seeding for quarterfinals now. So the winner of this game will get to play the loser of the third place crossover game in the quarterfinals tomorrow. Sounds like the stakes are pretty high then. The stakes are high. You definitely want to try and get a better seed to give you an easier run to the final. Mm. Both teams suffering just the one loss in pool play. Each losing to the Sunder team in their pools. So the two Sunder teams, Slice and Dice, finishing top of their pools. They're playing off now as well for the top seed of quarterfinals. Ellipsis, of course, just coming off a win against the home team, Fishwick United. They beat them 15-6, <laughs> so they're probably feeling pretty good. They've had a, an hour or two off for a nice long break, so we should see some nice fresh legs out here on the field. The other thing I wonder if will make a difference is so far for the weekend, the Lifters have played an extra game because they have more teams in their pool. So they've had four tough games. They've got a pretty leading. big roster, so I feel like they might be able to manage it. I beam have just the three games under their legs as we hear the siren go to signify the start of the clock. Ellipsis are looking ready. I beam looking like they're going a bit slower to the line, but... What do you think the average age of an I-beam player is, Simon? <laughs> a couple of years ago, that would have had a very different answer, but they've got <laughs> they've got a number of young players on the team this year that have graduated through. So Luke Prosser, um, Rob Merck, Max Luckman. To really give them some extra legs and really learn to play the Newcastle system. They really value possession. You'll see a lot of lateral movement from both teams here. Ellipsis really like to try and progress the disc down the sideline or close to the sideline, unlike many other teams and try and do it down the middle of the field. I'll be very similar. So you're going to see there's probably going to be a lot of action on the on the far sideline as the wind's not down to just a stiff breeze. So I don't think there's going to be as many wind affected throws as we've been seeing earlier in the day for those of us who are watching the previous game between Manly and Rogue saw some utter chaos at some points. <laughs> Tom Boyle hailing from Ballarat. It'll be nice to see a few more specky throws, less reliant on their <coughs> wind. And Sends here's the pull. The pool. Long and flat, fielded by John Greenfield. Greeny, Lavis. a bit of a veteran. Lavis to Prosser, dishes out to folks. Into Stoddard. Looking for that left handed throw. Greenfield Doherty. Another one of their younger, younger roster members, but already with a number of years under his belt. Folks keeps that low, but straight into the hands of Toolett, but. <laughs> so, Wouldn't want to look send like it a back normally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a really good look at that. Yeah, I think as. Uh, Seven and Dam around, around the far side of him. Just clipped his wrist on the way through. Prendergast oh. makes a play out of it. Greenfield leaves his feet. Hits Stoddard. Five metres from goal. And oh. folks again has to get oh. low. Has he got it? And he's got it. He's got it. Gee First whiz. goal to I-beam. Yeah, like we were talking about, very, very quick, fast movement. Barely time to get a cell count on. I've been making that look really easy against this star-studded ellipsis line. So the first goal going to the team on offense. As we see that catch again from John Greenfield. 
Very impressive. Having to reach behind him. Greenfield making it look easy at the ripe old age of 52. Do you think he'll ever retire? No. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't want to retire. <laughs> Why retire when you're still in the form that he's got? Very true. Beating all those young kids, making us all feel very bad. <laughs> Greenfield represented Australia multiple occasions, was a fixture of the senior men's team through the 90s and 2000s. <laughs> oh, the 90s. I don't even remember the 90s, Simon. <laughs> Gosh, Ash O'Sullivan there. Ryan Davey, current Australian men's team rep, to send the pull up. Playing in sunglasses. Not something you see overly yeah, that's often. Usually the sign of a definite rookie. <laughs> Carpenter. <laughs> Copland. It's a bit of his own look here. It's going to force a bit of lateral movement, but the lips are very comfortable with that. Matthews Hunter. Daly. I've been looking like they're trying to stop that huck. This is just going to have to move him back and forth. Latchley across the field, wait for gaps to open up. <laughs> Copland. He's been pushed back about 10 metres from where the pull originally ended up. Andrews. The I-beam defence really doing what it's meant to here. Copland slings it over the top to McGuckin. They're through the gap now. Carpenter. Got it about 30 from goal, but holds onto it. Let's every all the traffic stream past him. Andrews. Matthews Hunter on the high side. Quick little one-two play. And some quick yards. Back to Andrews. Andrews to Carpenter. Getting close to goal line now. I beam not letting them get it in easily. Really, really preventing that easy forward movement through the middle. Matt Daly. Recently moved down to Melbourne from Canberra. He should be used to this weather. Up on quick little shot through the middle to Howden. Matthews Hunter also formerly from Canberra. No one's in any great rush here, waiting for a certain option rather than a speculative option. Ellipsis know how to throw and catch. I think they'll just keep doing it until yeah, it works. The skills aren't really an issue for these two teams. It really comes down to the strategy, positioning and work rate. Very high completion rate from this team to set that in there. And Andrews just with a little flicky backhand into Max Halden. Very relaxed, just a Sunday toss between friends. Yeah. There's quite a number of roster changes to Ellipsis this year with players relocating to Melbourne for their work. I'm choosing that as the club to join. Max Halden moved from Sydney, as we mentioned. Matt Daly as well. I'm not sure what the draw of Melbourne is. Seems like a dreary place to live, but seems to be oh, working we're, for Ellipsis. We're, are we going to do that, are we, Cathy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Canberra advocate. One all the score. You got your money on either team? Oh, you can you can never write off IB. Okay. That's, what well, everyone always talks about. It's been 11 <laughs> years since their last national championship, but you can never write them off. Featured in the semi-finals a couple times here and there, but it's always it's a dreaded quarter-final matchup for many top teams that they see I-beam sneaking through because they've got a, players who can rise to the occasion when it's when it's needed. So wouldn't be surprised to still see them featured at the pointy end come tomorrow afternoon, <laughs> Greenfield. Has to have a second go at fielding the pool there, folks. Brenda Gaston on the mark. Folks keeps the low back end, oh. flat back end out. Not until it's ours. Tool it straight onto it. And he'll pick up the disc to start the offense. A Just very the experienced player. Low inside shot, Evans. So very creative with these throws. Really opens up space for his cutters, but with his throws, pops it up over the top to Lockman, to Ely. Ely looking back to the high side. No one really moving no. for him. He's touched a couple of signals, gets the break <laughs> around, backhand out to Tool it. 
who leaps it into the end zone. He knows what he's doing. That Ely Tulit uh, connection there, something they've been doing for a number of years on across a number of teams. And that puts the score 2 1 to Ellipsis. We'll fix up that score graphic shortly, but in the meantime, Chantel Jones. On the sideline here, we can actually hear the power on the field. Um, you can actually hear the sprinters as they're leaving the ground make a big thump to push off through the air. Um, it's a testament to how well trained these players are. Yeah, wow, the sounds of the gun. <laughs> Some great sprinting technique there. I hope they've got a good sprint coach. The temperature has just dropped about another five degrees. And Dude. players have got to be got to be feeling that wind chill in there. It's not a Shorts good time for me trying to talk up Canberra's attractiveness to live. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this throw from Ely getting around the defense there, finding space around two defenders and thinking about that third one at the back there. Perfectly weighted throw. There's plenty of spin on it too. Tuller really having to save the day there, though. But like a few Ellipsis players could have really been moving a bit more, but here we go. Granfield fielding the pull, bringing it in on the sideline. Lavis to Hill. Got it center field, pumps up that four. And oh, he's put his first one straight up into the sky. Oh. But Stoddart had front position there. I've been playing a side stack there. Mm. Yeah, so Stoddart's called the foul on that, and Ely had because Ely had to go over the top of him, and I think from our look, it did did clip his arm. So we'll see what they come up with. Looks like uncontested. It's an uncontested mm -hmm. foul. So Stoddart will restart play. It's straight across the field to Doherty. Doherty not showing any inexperience there. Lavis. Oh. Greenfield charging him for that one. And folks, oh. a huge layup here from Rob Andrews. And folks, straight away mm. says, not got my arm on the way through. Andrew is not convinced. But they'll have it. Now catch their breath, have a quick chat. We'll get that on the replay. So it was just a short range throw from Greenfield. And Oh, hard to say. <laughs> I don't know. We can't even tell in slow motion replay, but Andrews chooses not to contest in the end, and it stays with folks. Greenfield to Davey. Okay, so just his catch for that last little pop-up. Folks having to get real low for that one. And tangled He's working by, hard. Tangled by Andrews on the way through. No stoppage. Kept going with it. Stod up. A great inside shot, but Tool it again on that one. Another block ahead of Liam Doherty. Tool it winding up that backhand. Loxman. Also lines up the big backhand gainer into the chest of Rob Andrews. Andrews winds up for the backhand as well. Finds McGuckin in board to Loxman. And puts it in oh, high to the advantage of West Fleming. Oh, Who's oh, taken oh, one, oh. two grabs at it. <laughs> oh, oh. Gee, I said it this morning, Simon, but if you're going to bobble it, you better catch it. And he did manage to reel that one in. Ellipsis really showing what they do best there, moving that disc beautifully up the far sideline. I think he's. <laughs> I think he might have had his teammate Peter really in his ear then, saying, take your time, take your time. And... I am second guess that catch and you seem to turn back and acknowledge there that you just be quiet when I'm trying to do my job. <laughs> Great throw by Lockton to put mm. it up over. Sat beautifully. Yeah. Oh, heartbreaking to watch a second time. <laughs> Chris Folk's having to really do some work there for IBM on that point, and that puts the score at 3-1. Ellipsis looking comfortable. With a timeout called by IBM. Ellipse is taking the chance here to just have a bit of a chat while I beam look like they're having a bit more of a serious discussion. Any idea what they'd be saying there, Simon? Hard to tell at this point. I think it's just a chance to take a quick breath. Daniel Clint to the Newcastle native might have a bit more insight for us. Well, the Newcastle I beam for one of the first times ever have a coaching staff. Ashley O'Sullivan and Jess Stoddard both coaching this season for I-Beam, so a very well-drilled outfit they are. 
and uh, I think it's just them looking to break the momentum a little bit, have a bit of a breather, and try and settle things down a little bit. Thanks, Dan. I think at really this point of the season when there's barely 72 hours left of it, you're never too worried about what you're doing structurally or skilled. As you would have thought that any crucial errors by this point have been uncovered and <laughs> rectified. So you see, just thought out there. Rugged up. Sporting a good pom pom on that beanie. So we see the ellipsis offensive line. Number of young players on the line here. Charlie Burchett on the far left. Young player out of Geelong. And I beam. Very experienced line up at the moment. I think it'll be probably just match defense, I think, from I beam here. Maybe a little zone look just to hold up any pull reception play. Maybe his own transition could be the way to go. Tom Boyle sends a pull up. Oh. Good hang time on that one. Nicely. Granfield feels it within their own end zone. Lavis Doherty. Ooh, a Inside pretty throw. Hill. Hill puts the back end up. Stoddard's got time to run this down <laughs> easy. You like has to go early, has oh. line on his back. <laughs> Fantastic set play there. Really just opened the space up in the middle of the field there. Lavis got it going there with that huge game of throw to Chris Hill. Line wasn't going to give it to him easily though. He had to work. Just balls it down the middle. Chantel Jones. I just had a quick chat to uh, Lipsis coach Cole. Um, who said that they were using that timeout to commend their team on their intensity of the first couple of points and that from now on they're going to look to try and stop the longs and watch for that lateral movement of the disc because it's often been a lateral movement to a long. So if they can shut those both down, they should be able to stay ahead. Chris Hill, that cannon, he's one of the best throwers in the country. Just barely even a wind-up, just sits out a 45-metre backhand. Such power in his wrist. Effortlessly. Cole Fink, the Ellipsis coach, pulling double duty this weekend. He's playing at Division 2, just <laughs> up the road, and then racing back where he can to look after his charges here. I think there's a few coaches playing one division and coaching the other this weekend. Mm. Makes it quite convenient, all over, done and dusted. So Chris Hill will send this pull up. Big wind up. He's put that <laughs> long and flat, and that's going to pin Ellipsis deep in there. And oh. Enzo right in the corner. What a pull. Not the first time he's done that. Matthews Hunter, Daly. Not a clean up from first up. McGuckin, one out. He's got Andrews. Lands just in the field. Stoddart hot in his heels. McGuckin. Back to Andrews. Winds the backhand up. He's got Copland versus Hill. Copland's going to have to work. He's got to go. Oh, and no. And doesn't quite get there. Great shot by Andrew. Shot it straight down to the middle of the field. So Huge play. effort by Copland, but just, yeah. just out of his reach. I think he might have expected the throw to come a bit more towards the mm. line, so had to cover about five or ten metres more than he originally planned. We do have that slight breeze pushing it down. Andrew's getting, getting his close-up shot there. Davey to restart play. Stoddard. Unleashes the backhand. He's looking for Hill. Uh, Daly gets up, foots it away. But Tim Hayes there. He scrambled to try and keep it alive, but just faded away from him. Daly did well there. They did say they were going to try and stop those long shots. So, Thanks. let's just have three handles back and they've isolated two cutters in the middle of the field and there we go. Andrews has to oh, get up. Oh, oh. He used every inch of that vertical leap, but another half, inch, another half inch would have done it. 
You can be tall, but not everybody can be that tall. <laughs> it's unfair, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's going to have to work. Long wide throw to Davey. Opening up the middle of the field here. Oh. Rob Andrews with the intercept. Davey right on the heels of Copland. Bissett. What's that Ooh. lateral backhand, but slings his back out to McCuckin. In the meantime, behind him, there was a... There was a pick call, There I was believe. a lot going on. <laughs> pick call, and someone did a roly-poly. They've agreed that that little short pass didn't really have a lot to do with what was happening back there in the centre of the field, so McGuckin taps to restart play. Bissett. Great backhand throw out to Daly out in the space. Back to Bissett. Howden. Finds Andrews in the middle. Matthews Hunter having to change course to get out of the way. Howden, Daly. Much happening in the field. Good inside shot to Andrews. It's broken through. Held him five metres now from the end zone. Right on that sideline. Andrews gets around oh. the marker oh. and finds Copland in the corner. A beautiful breakthrough to Copland there for the goal. And Scammell having to do some work there on the mark, but he's trying to, I think they're just trying to cover too much on the marker. They're keeping it a flat mark to try and stop longer throws. But once they get closer to the end zone, you all of a sudden have so much more angle to cover. Mm. Guess it's hard with a very experienced yeah, team of throwers like Ellipsis. They can sort of nearly throw around most yeah. things put on them. Scamily saw him on the knees there, realising exactly where things hadn't gone well for him. Score 4-2 now. 20 minutes gone, we, we haven't been racing through these points. The first two went bang, bang, but definitely a lot steadier offense since then. Mm. Both teams really showing they know what they're doing out there. So all the women's teams are done for the day. And it's just the men's division playing at the moment with seeding for quarterfinals happening tomorrow morning. A few women sticking around to watch. I think I'd be going home for a hot shower. <laughs> think the Ellipsis women's team are here to cheer on their club mates. Greenfield, Lavis. He's got a couple of long options, but goes short to Hill. Hill pumps oh, the forehand oh, oh. up. There's Doherty. He's oh. going to have to work it down. Pross is there to support. He's good. And oh, he oh, oh. absolutely charges that one down. Makes it look easy. Oh. Liam Doherty. Beautiful. I think I've severely underrated him when I called him maybe yeah. a less experienced player before. I think I'm wrong. I haven't seen any sign of less experience there. Yeah, I think Daniel's about to come online to tell me exactly why I'm wrong. Well, Liam Dowdy, the first time I saw him, I thought he was Jimmy Mickle's younger brother. Similar body type, big frame, very, very quick with, you know, pretty immaculate throws. So he's, uh, he's having a good game to start here. Well, it's Jimmy Mickle, one of the more prominent Oh, players in the ultimate scene, the big American. And again, Chris, all this time on the forehand side, again, just... Sending it nicely. Just oh, showing just his the action ability just of throw there. Effortless, <laughs> 45, almost 50 metre pass. Dropping it on a dime for his teammate. So, it's simple enough for I-beam to get those offensive scores from left to right, but... The order of the day is they have to get the disc off Ellipsis, mm. who just aren't making errors. Ellipsis know they've got a good completion rate and they're quite happy to pass it back between them. So you see the Ellipsis women's team there rugged up on the sideline, having done for the day, still undefeated in their division. The club going for the elusive double victory. Has it been done before? I think it may have been done back in about 2002, <laughs> 2003 by the old Southside Club from Sydney, but certainly not in this generation. Bissett, Andrews and Copland. 
creeping the disc up the field just with quick lateral movements. Happy to gain half a metre at a time. Sticking with this <laughs> arrowhead zone. Angie's wasn't ready for that one at <laughs> all. The Garkin. Still caught, it's all right. Moving back down the field a bit. Well, just getting pushed backwards, but they're not worried at all about that. They're happy just to make the defense do all the work. <coughs> Carpenter having to get low for that one. Andrews. Copland having a few fakes, just letting the defense know where he's looking and his teammates as well. Yes, it. First year with ellipsis. No one exerting too much energy out here on the field. A lot of, lot of vocal energy coming from the sideline. We can hear players barking instructions from both teams. I've mm -hmm. done very well to pin down their forward movement and force them back to their own end zone. Daily. Just looking for them to make a little error. Yeah, they've pushed, pushed about 35 mm. metres in the last probably 12, 13 passes. It's defence working well for IBM. Andrews, oh, gets it. Well, that's the closest we've seen to a turnover. Carpenter. Mm, here they go. Pops oh, it to McGuckin. Oh, he's on the ground. Having to go full stretch. Andrews. But Rob Swan downfield off camera, being just that deep target and forcing the IBM defense to take him seriously. But he's come in now, wanting to get his hands on the disc. You can see him at the top there. Keely on the mark here for IBM. He'd be one of their rookies, I'd say. Certainly earning his stripes today, especially at this point. Oh, another wobbly throw there. That's the, Copland winds up the back end, <laughs> and Davey sees it coming from a mile away, gets there first, and Ivan have earned that turnover. There was close to 40 to 50 passes on that possession there, as their zone forced them back into their own end zone. And very well read and very well weighted. Lipsis were the first one to crack in terms of concentration. Davey. Lateral to Keeley. See if I can keep it together now. Ooh, nice. Couple of good little flips. Oh. Big throw going up the sideline to the big lad. 91, Robbie Pakoulis. Not sure if that went out the back of the end zone. Not quite able to keep it in either yeah, probably, way. Probably a bit too much on it. Mm. Lips is here with a second chance. They've shown they've got the patience. Let's yep. see what they can do. IBM will resume that zone look, we think. Being so effective before. Andrews. Copland again. Let's just have one receiver deep off screen just to let IBM know that they're serious at that long option if it becomes available. Bissett across Carpenter now. Carpenter, another relocator from Perth to Melbourne. Copeland having to work a bit to find a free option that time. Oh, <laughs> fingertips to it there from Sturt Wilson. <coughs> Big wide shot there to McGuckin. Oh. McGuckin pops it down the line. Davey's going to be able to this one again. He's knocked the free. Oh, come on, the straight nice. into the hands of Daly. He's caught a run on the goal line. That is un unlucky as you get. Lateral to Rob Andrews. And there's a heartbreaker, Kathy. Oh, Daly was just there and he just didn't give up. Oh, that kept it just alive. Ivan worked so hard that point. They should be really proud of their defense there. Yeah. But Ellipsis just having that patience and being able to see those long options when they were there. Chantel oh. Jones, what do you make of that? 
Um, I have actually just had a good look on the sideline and we have our two spirit captains coming together for a little quick discussion. So in Ultimate, you'll have your regular captain of the game, but you also have someone whose job is to make sure the spirit of the game is upheld. So it's really great to see at this high level that that is still being made a priority. Um, I believe there was maybe a con uh, contact comment. However, I can't confirm that. Um, it'd be great to see how the spirit goes for the rest of the game. It's good. Spirit captains will regularly check in on each other and just make sure that we're all pretty comfortable with what's happening. Really great to see that being displayed so well in this Opens division here. The score, 5-3 now. The advantage of Ellipsis, but what, uh, <coughs> what the offense... What the offence line for Ellipsis will be hoping is that the defence buy him just a bit more time on the sideline to rest after that one. And that pull has gone... Oh, the wind just carried that out the sideline. That has gone east and that has gone well out of bounds. I've been looking like they're taking a brick. Well, I'm happy with that release as soon as you let go of it. So Lavis to bring it in from the brick mark. 44 from goal. Oh. Start up. Ely just on his toes. Waves has got Doherty streaming through the middle. Doesn't like it. Back to Granfield. Just might, might be a little short range Ooh. reset. So Granfield's put a very windy forehand up. But it paid off. Start up. Reels it in. Finds Prosser. Prosser's got a few cutting towards him. He's just got eyes for one of them. <laughs> Yeah. And Sidney Dan has got the block after Great a straight throw. Great pressure from Ellipsis there. Just forcing an error from Ivy. Tom Boyle. Pick up the disc. Got a chance to go up when Ely. Yeah, they really flattened up that mark, forcing him to throw laterally. Boyle has a couple of fumbles. As long as he catches it. Number of cutters streaking deep, but... They're going to have to move short row. Seven of them absolutely torching Tim Lavis there on the up line cut. Gains about 20 metres. A beautifully sat flick to him too. Boyle operating in short corners. He's forced to go forward. And <laughs> wouldn't you know it, Damon Prendergast is all over that one. What a point. Fairly chaotic, fairly hectic there. From <laughs> Not too sure who was going to score that one there, but Ellipse is just... That movement up the line was something. A few fortunes going their way. Daniel, what have you seen? Well, you may notice some of the players wearing black armbands. Campbell Rat, well known and well respected in the Ultimate community, passed away during the week. His son is playing here today, Tom Tullett. Of course, Eric, condolences to the whole family. Campbell Rat, a long time manager. Of Australian representative teams, well known and respected within the community. 6 3 now to Ellipsis. So, Kathy, do we think that they'll keep this run going? Look, I think IBM have got a bit more in them yet. I think they're uh, going to learn a little bit there from that offense that Ellipsis just showed. Oh, and I think we're about to see their defense step up a bit. Up, I'm not ruling them out yet, but I do think Ellipsis are looking pretty comfortable and pretty strong. I wouldn't be surprised to try and see them target uh, Chris Hill in the middle of the field again. It's another fantastic pull from Toolett. Well, he's Greenfield waiting under it, and he's got pressure on him from the very first pass. Great rundown by Ellipsis. Lavis. Quick back and forth. Davey there as well, folks. Flight at his feet, finds Greenfield. <laughs> Another low throw there. They've, they've got to get these a bit higher up, I think. Start out completely on his own towards that high side. Folks. Finds Hill. Here we go, Hill. He's got Doherty going long. Lipsis are really giving them the unders here. Focusing Folks. on stopping that deep. Yeah, fairly, it's a fairly spread out offense, allowing a lot of 45-degree uh, angled cuts towards the thrower, Davey. Oh, looking a bit messy there. There's a bit of pick oh. or Greenfield getting off the ground, but... <laughs> 
most, pl most players had already stopped, so it will go back to... We think it might go back to Davey, but it will. So we say that again. <laughs> <laughs> the leaping toilet brush still getting it done. He's got to be immortal or something. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't seem possible. Gee whiz. <laughs> Davey. Oh, beautiful fill there. Brilliant 45 angle throw. Still a bit shaky throw coming out of the hand, but Doherty has it. About 10 from goal. Flips it out to Greenfield. Not much happening from the stack. You'll want to try and move this quickly. Can't hang on to too long. Doesn't leave him long. He's throwing it straight into <laughs> Angus Wicks' hand. He'll take that one. <laughs> to it. He's got Flavel heading long. We're back under now. He just takes the short option. Locked and getting up. Lavis on the mark. Not much coming towards him. A lot, a lot of ellipses cut start from off to the right of screen and then come under at pace early. Doherty just got a sniff on that D. He looks like he might be looking for another one. Oh. Tyler sends a big long rangey throw up. This is going to set for Burchard. Ryan Davies underneath him. Oh. And Burchard. Just He's reels that well. in. Just inside the end zone, Charlie Burchett, the youngster from Geelong. He's has, got legs. He ran down there and took that. Has made the challenge look, well, medium difficult. I, didn't, I wouldn't say he made it look easy, but he had Ryan Davey hot on his heels there. Davey had the last second bid, but... Uh, it was definitely a tough catch, but showing why he's earned a place on this team. Oh, the standard deliver forehand. Huck, look at that. Didn't even move his feet. Mm. Does back the back very end out and watch this. Oh. Unbelievable. He's thrown a few frisbees before. So another timeout called. We think this one by Ellipsis. I think they just wanted to make sure they got a break in before half. We're 30, just approaching 35 minutes into the game. Nice chance for a breather. It's been played at a frenetic pace this game with 10 goals in. Mm, Ellipse is really taking time. away from I beams. It's just yeah. it was quite close and they just pulled away nicely. Looking very comfortable. Do you think we'll see anything from I beam coming out of this timeout? I don't think they're really gonna dramatically change what they're doing. I think they've got faith in their ability to maintain possession. But just maybe they'll try and work it a little bit further down the field before they take the shot. Because mm. I think when they do take the shots, they're letting it sit in the air for long enough for ellipsis defenders to catch up. But they can just advance it. Just another, not, not much, just another five or so metres just to take that edge off the longer throws. But We have seen ellipsis allowing them the unders a little bit more, so mm. might, they might utilise that a bit. Yeah. And of course, it's very difficult to attack on those 45 degree angles heading up field into the wind. Mm -hmm. As we see, Ellipsis in a very jovial mood. Looking to chalk up another win and progress on their hunt for their first national championship. I beam chasing their second. Game advisors giving the whistle there. I beam still in a huddle. Ooh. Daniel Clanton. The uh, I beam time out there, Tim Lavis, one of the team leaders, getting really, really animated, firing up his team, demanding more. There you go. I think they just want just that bit more focus and intensity. They really need to just get this one in. I think their offensive line just need to get a goal just to settle their minds and just go, right, we've got this going. They're probably running with a short roster, I think. Uh, quite a few players will be playing almost every point of this game, I think. I don't think we've seen Stud out on the bench maybe once or twice. <laughs> Known for having a short roster, I beam, and liking a good run around. Yeah. I mean, they, that's what they plan for, that's what they prepare for, and that's how they train. It produces very well-rounded players in the Newcastle system. Of course, Newcastle is a strong city in the mixed division, which runs 
from May to October. Newcastle Mix Club. Mm. Uh, Pie Wagon. Silver Reg medal in 2019. Yeah, a regular feature of the Australian Mixed Ultimate Championships finals, which that will be brought to you later this year on KO Sports in October. Folks, Lavis, Greenfield. Here comes Hill, straight through the middle. Oh, he's left it for... That's great communication there by Dory to say, I've got this oh, one. He puts it up no. looking for Luke Prosser. Just overthrown there. Prosser yeah, really hustling down to get... Just not quite. Yeah, but they've moved it up. It's usually around that sort of 25 to 30 metre from goal space where they do take those shots. And as we spoke about before, mm -hmm. moving just that little bit closer just so the... Ellipsis defense just doesn't have time to catch up. So Lockton to restart. Immediately looks to boil to Australian under 20 teammates. Toolet. Lockton catches it off his toes. Pumps it up the line to Andrews. Andrews, he's got the early as an option coming under. Lips is feeling quite comfortable on that sideline. Yeah, just really working it down the hallway there. Oh, it's only oh. just as he's pumped the long Greenfield's there, but Andrews is going to get this one down. Oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, I don't know. There might be a... Popped a little nudge in the air from, I think, Prosser there, and Prosser oh. straight away, very apologetic, but... Nice hand up there. Not sure if there's a call. Yeah, I think there's... Looks like they're having a chat. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah. Yep, so Andrews taking it from the front of the end zone. The recipient of the foul call there, so right on the line. Yep, oh, and easily pops that in. Lock them one out. Just a little juke step one way, jab step the other. Ellipse is proving quite proficient in the upwind points here, mm. showing their throw ability. It's just not bothering them at all, is there, these conditions? and. See, Granfield just got turned the wrong way by Lachlan, the youngster. <laughs> and that's as we tick towards the 40-minute mark. Ellipsis have scored their eighth goal, taking us to halftime. We're going to head down to Daniel Clinton, who's there with John Greenfield. Yeah, I've uh, managed to capture John Greenfield. John, how's it going? Yeah, I was struggling. I um, think we just a little bit uh, missing, you know, one or two shots on though, obviously. Um, and we've been playing a flat middle up to now on defence, and they were able to beat that. That's normally worked well against those guys. So we switched it up to force flick, um, and then they were able to sort of walk up the sideline. So, um, yeah, so defensive, offensive defence, I think we need to just tighten up. Uh, with our offence, we've just got to believe and just keep connecting. You know, you saw the last shot was just, you know, a bit sort of rushed. Yeah, in the red zone. So a bit rushed in the red zone. All right, well, thank you for your time, John. Good luck no for the rest worries. of the game. Thanks, Dan. And now we're going to throw over to Chantel. I'm here with Max Haldin. Uh, what are your thoughts on the game so far? You're up at the moment. Yeah, obviously very happy with the scoreboard, um, but it's been a really intense game. As you've seen, a lot of very, very close calls, some bubbles and very close catches. So it's been very intense. Great game. Nice. Uh, how are you feeling that you're playing yourself? Yeah, I'm really happy. I think, you know, I'm, my role on the team is really to facilitate the greatness of others and other people are playing great, so I feel like I'm doing my job. That's so wonderful. Uh, what are your thoughts of the second half of the game? What are you expecting to see from your team? Yeah, I think, you know, Ellipsis, we really pride ourselves on coming out with a certain level of intensity and bringing that same intensity throughout a whole game or raising it. So we're definitely going to try and come out as strong as we can. Awesome. You've got eight on the board. Let's see if you can get eight more. Thank you, Chantel. So I think we're going to go for a quick break and we'll be back soon.
back to the second half of this I-beam versus ellipsis game. I'm Cathy and I'm joined with Simon here and we are your commentators. We've just had a really interesting first half. Simon, do you want to give us your thoughts? Well, it's been, it's been quite hectic offense from both teams, really. We've seen lots of fast passes, lots of long passes, lots of spectacular plays, but at the moment, ellipsis just have the ascendancy by just not turning over the disc once they've got it. I've been, we've seen a couple of speculative throws that haven't came off early in the game, but started to not come off later in that first half. And the Lipses have just pounced on every opportunity they've been given to race out to an 8-3 lead. Mm, Ellipsis really showing how good they are with the disc. They know how to throw and catch and they're happy to do it a hundred times if it means they score the goal. Yeah. So we see them lined up to begin the second half on offense, throwing from left to right. The wind's still... Still causing a little bit of yeah. havoc out there. Still, Got to keep it interesting. Still going from bottom left to top right. Ryan Davey there, captain of I-Beam. Sends the pull into play, Ooh. keeps it low and flat. Keeps the center field. Swan to Andrews. Running with his flat zone again. Being those huck plays, Andrews. Working there with Bissett. Very quick movement here. Haldens found Daly and got it back. Lips all playing very close in in an effort to break through that three-person defensive wall at the front there. Andrews skipping through. I beam liking the zone look. Oh, very close throw there. It's broken through. McGuckin has one look at the end zone, heads back to his captain Andrews, who's about two metres from the goal. Mm. And Max Holden. There it is. Comfortably finding space there. Ellipsis is showing us the power of safe passes. They played that a lot more aggressively than they have been in the first half, really looking to push forward through that zone rather than just go for lateral movement. Daniel. Yeah, I just want to highlight Max Halden from Ellipsis there. Long-time bench player in Sydney, uh, Australian representative. What he's really known for in Ultimate is his ability to break open a zone offensively. Huge in for this Ellipsis team, and you saw him in that zone every second pass, and he was creating options, creating movement for them. Yeah. Max Halden, he could, he could find space in an elevator. Just pops up at exactly the right second, right where you need him. We've seen that I-beam zone have mixed results, so it'll be interesting to see if they put it on again. Yeah. Worked quite well earlier on, but now it doesn't seem to be quite so as effective. So we see Tom Boyle just off the right of screen there. Ready to pull this one. He's put high. Oh. Plenty of float time. I think that's what he was aiming Ritchie. for with his previous one. Greenfield fields the pull. As they run down. Moves to Lavis. Running that set play with Chris Hill coming across the field, but Ellipsis are ready for that one. So it's forcing the three main throwers just to work it among themselves while the receivers readjust. But this time, <laughs> Hill's found space. Great gainer. Oofed. Lavis, Doherty. Up the oh. line to folks. Beautiful this is, this is better Fox. offense. See if I can keep it together. Just to a vertical formation. Doherty, lateral to Greenfield. Ellipsis is pushing them back down Scott the field. Scott Folk's moving. He's going to have to go for this oh. one. Greenfield just didn't put enough on it. So didn't put enough power on it. So the disc faded late away from Folk's. That wind pushing it into the ground at that last second. Folk's been a little protective of his, uh, of one of his hands. Saw him dislocate a finger in an incident at Canberra Cup about a month ago. Uh. Not, a, not a pretty looking <laughs> incident. <laughs> Fingers are quite important for Frisbee, so... <laughs> Ely. Back to oh. Boyle. Boyle with Hill coming, try, trying to come over the top of him. Oh, not face at all. Plays on Flavel. Looking down the sideline for an option, but just goes for the reset to Ely. Ely bounces straight back to where it came from. Boyle sends a lot looking for Flavel. Flavel's got five, ten steps. Wait for it into his hands and catches his second goal of the game. Just. Goodness, Ellipsis really pulling this away, making it look so easy. 
Blows it out to 10-3 now. So we just see the replay of that movement up the field. They're really liking that other sideline there. Favelli's Trusting their flicks in the wind. Beautifully sat. Great to see Fulvella out the field. Been carrying an injury for most of the season, but he's managed to get himself fit and firing for this event. Daniel. Thanks, Simon. Just talking quickly with Cole Fink, coach of Ellipsis. I asked him about uh, the lead up to this game and he mentioned that for Ellipsis this season it's really been about them and their decisions. They don't really mind what the conditions are or who they're playing. It's always been about responsibility and how they're going to approach things. Good attitude to have. There's only a handful of, you think, of things you can control in Ultimate. Oh, what a nice looking dog. <laughs> Your opposition isn't one of them, but you can control your attitude, your response, and everything that you do as a team. Tall it. They're on the far left, lining up to pull. We'll be looking to really pin I-beam down hard on this one, denying them any easy upfield movement. He's a strong puller, Tool it. Aims for that far corner. Oh. Lands it just in bounds. Greenfield oh. plays it immediately. Davey. Lateral to Hill. Oh, Greenfield. Lavis. He's got a cutter about 40 metres away. Toilet finally recognises as Stoddard. Ooh, the second could he be let, anyone's here. The second he let that go, I was disappointed. <laughs> He's turned away in frustration the second he let that go. And Toilet throws Ooh. the big hammer. Stoddard's cut oh, the other way. You love and he's to got see the block it. as well. Oh. <laughs> I think both teams might take a moment to breathe here. <laughs> <laughs> One all, they say. Lavis picks Great up to the see restart. Great Specky throws. Doherty. One of I-Beam's better players today. Folks, an uncharacteristic fumble as he's trying to make sure he's kept his feet in bounds. And Very flips. uncharacteristic. The fans at home won't be too pleased with that one. So, Loxman. Pick up and restart from the sideline, about 30 from goal. Looks immediately to Tool it. It's oh. put a worm burn around. Tool it had to go full stretch for that one. It's on the ground. It's good to throw your throws from low, but there's such a thing as too low. Lavis. It's got four cutters all heading in various directions. Hill finds the space. Lavis gets it back. Greenfield and folks both there. Greenfield takes seniority. <laughs> Lavis. Respect your elders, you say. Oh, it no easy reset, so it has to go forward to Greenfield. No one moving, so bounces it straight back the other way. I wonder what Greenfield's step count is after a game like this. Oh, Just crazy. a workhorse. Folks, finds Davey. Doherty. I've been really starting to find plenty of options now. Doherty puts a nice throw out and Stoddard. <laughs> He's got to be happy with his effort after that one, after that. Let's face it, the howler of a backhand throw he put up mm. early. And I-Beam, their fourth goal of the game. Chantel. I've just had a quick chat to a couple of I-Beam players um, who inter interestingly had a very similar halftime conversation to Ellipsis. Uh, they spoke about things like making sure that they were backing their skill level and making sure that they had a big mental reset. They're going to let go of the first half and uh, see how they go in the second half. And we can definitely see that it's worked in their favour because they have just scored an amazing goal. Mm. So I-Beam definitely outworked the Ellipsis defence there. We just saw they kept... Ellipsis are right on the hips early, but then as that point drifted on, I mean, was starting to find themselves two steps, three steps ahead of their defenders on each option. Oh, this wind just picking up a little bit here on this sunny afternoon. So I've been mean, now got their, well, when I say the defensive unit, it's largely the same players <laughs> with maybe a couple of, couple of, couple subs. of different looks. Ryan Davey to pull. well away from his teammate so he's standing close to this line so that it allows the natural wind drift of the pull to push it over towards that high side of the field you'll aim to land it as close as you can towards that corner but it's just going to fall short of where he wanted it to be and be dead center of the field copland daily 
Got that flat mark again. This time with a match defense. Beautiful throw from Bailey. McGuckin. Good inside shot to Andrews. Andrews looking only at the middle of the field. Takes a look at the backhand, puts the wide ranging backhand up. McGuckin's going to have to go here. That was a throw. And that could not have been a better way to throw. Beautiful curve, sat perfectly for the receiver. You have to be happy with that. Just had enough forward power on it to get that 35 metres or so to the end zone. And then enough spin that it just hung in the breeze there. And mm. that guy can almost slow to a jog by the time he got to it. A world-class display of ultimate there. Oh. And that was too easy. Rob Merck, all he could do was watch him wonder. He's looking back at his teammates thinking, where did that come from? Tim Hayes there, just unable to do much about the reach of Rob Andrews. Got a bit worried about our sideline camera there that it might have been collected <laughs> on the way through, but... <laughs> oh, that'd be a rookie error. Definitely collected a sideline camera in my time. 4-11 <laughs> the score. 56 minutes down. I don't think we're going to hit 100 minutes at this rate. No, it's looking like a very leisurely end to the afternoon. So for IBEAM now, it's about salvaging what they can. I think they've still got a few more points in them. Don't think they're going to let Ellipsis take this easily. They've really got to take what they can from today, get themselves set for the quarterfinal tomorrow morning. We're into knockouts. You get the W or you are done. What a pull. That's an enormous pull. And that's taking for a long time. Prendergast and Sivden <laughs> The defenders nearly beat the pull down. Yeah, there before the disc has stopped. Deny that first pass. And it's his own look here from... Mm. Looks as Prosser. Flies oh. down the wide to Doherty. He's kept his toe just in. Amazing body control and field awareness. Mm. Short to Greenfield. Looks as a switch to a match defence. Greenfield knocks it, Stoddard, oh. who takes a couple of goes at it. Fires it back to Doherty. Folks, and Doherty again. Fires oh. up the forehand to Hill. Whoa. That was a clinic, absolute clinical offense. That was some fast movement of the disc, just not allowing Ellipsis to really reset that zone look they had at the start. And that's one way to ensure you know your defenders aren't going to get it. Just make sure the disc isn't the, <laughs> in the air for very long. Bullets flying oh, around the field, just straight into the chest of the receiver. He couldn't ask for better delivery. No, I beam definitely aren't out of this game yet. So you see, Prosser just got that beautiful down the line pass, and you see already oh, just getting that back foot down just in time. Oh, look at this! Oh, <laughs> just centimeters in it. As we see, Stoddart just getting across. Great little one-two from Doherty. Daniel. Yeah, Ash O'Sullivan, coach of the Newcastle I-Beam, just called his defence in. Uh, there was some colourful language. He's demanding more on the mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ellipsis, I'd agree with that ellipsis. Just it, too easy to get their throws out that they want to do. They've just got to put more, there's got to put more pressure on it. When in doubt, just a bit more. Yeah. Might be even worth almost the marker stepping back just a fraction, just giving them the, the extra quarter of a second to react to the thrower's movement. Mm. And also cuts off, uh, and that was going to come off a bit more of the angle of the throw. But we'll oh, see. It's a nice pull. We'll see what they do here. Bissett to Court. feel the pull. Copland. Taking their time. Happy to just elite, let the defense send. McGuckin. Pumps the backhand out, looking for Andrews on the other end this time. And Stop. Oh, my goodness. These two together, making it look oh so easy. So Copland. easy. McGuckin and Andrews. This Beautiful, those two, connections. The one-two punch that you just can't get up from. You love to see it. Just... Beautiful offense demonstrated yet again by Ellipsis. Ellipsis maintained that seven goal lead. They're just looking now just to keep the scoreboard ticking over there. I don't think they're overly worried about anything outside. Anyone not wearing a white jersey. This will make a very good day for them on the second day of the Australian Ultimate Championships. Yep. Their only defeat so far coming at the hands of Sunder Slice. Mm. Who we saw in action earlier today getting done by Melbourne Juggernaut. So it's 
It's an interesting uh, turn of events here today, Simon. I think, uh, I think Sunder Dice, the only undefeated team left in the Open Division, so it's, it's still really it's anyone's, anyone's game. game. It's anyone's <laughs> tournament. <laughs> We're in for an exciting ultimate over the next two days on days three and four. Coming to you via KO Sports. There's your KO freebie. Oh. Oh, another pull. This one is going to sit for a while. I think that's going to drift out, that one. And now that it does. There's not quite enough flow the angle on it. This went a bit too direct, that one, but he's not going to be too upset with that one, given the way their defensive efforts have really been able to clamp down on Ibeam mm. so comfortably. Gives them plenty of time to set up their defense, yeah. too. So Ibeam running Greenfield, taking his time, walking up to the brick mark. Bit I of beam. a horizontal. Yeah, running that lateral. They've got five across the... It's four across the centre of the field. Early shot to start oh, up. Oh, nice. Oh, quick little, <laughs> quick little shot to Doherty and... Had to reel that one in. Oh. Looking for Lavis, has one look at him and Lavis gets open, puts it up the line to start up. Oh. Right into his lap. Fantastic offence there from Ibeam. Gee, both these teams really showing they can work it upwind. Not bothered at all, are they? Very impressive to see. What we originally thought was going to be quite a game. Look at this. Doherty's lined up Lavis. And Lavis is straight away spotted Stoddard. You see Stoddard, he just sat there and waited for a moment. So Lavis got it clear in his hands then provided the straight option. Daniel. Yeah, just wanted to highlight a player from I-Beam. One of their rookies, Max Luckman, playing defensively. Uh, He's having a great game. You probably haven't noticed, but that's because his players not touched the disc. <laughs> yep. Always a sign of good defense. It's very easy as a defensive player to feel like you're not doing anything. But if yeah. your player's not getting the disc, you are doing everything you should be. It's something I've always remembered to note as a coach. If, uh, if I don't remember the player being on the mark at all, it means their player must never have got the disc. <laughs> it's a timeout called. Quite a few timeouts this game, really the making use of those. Yeah, with um, third game of the day for Ellipsis, second game of the day for Ibeam. Mm. Really want to preserve, still preserve a bit of energy. There's still at least three games for each team to come for the tournament. I would have thought they wouldn't want their muscles to seize up in this cool afternoon air, but... <laughs> <laughs> so saw Ellipsis getting in for their cheer. Ibeam with their hands in as well. Oh, a nice crisp cheer from Ibeam. You love to see it. Something not that easy to achieve, a crisp cheer. Takes a bit of practice, doesn't it? <laughs> Sporting their beautiful green and brown uniforms. <laughs> bit of a staple on the Australian ultimate scene. Yeah. Uh, emerald and cinnamon, the official <laughs> colours. I've been told there are, as we saw in there, profile video before that was the colors of the world war one battalion that came out of newcastle so it's a bit wholesome the, yeah they're not the first team from newcastle to wear those colors i think it's a bit of a city colors a bit of a tribute Some iconic branding so we've got the game with game advisors blowing the whistles to signify that we're ready to go i beam of course paying tribute to newcastle's heritage as a steel producing city I'm learning all the fun facts today. <laughs> Chris Stoddard. Ready to pull. Wearing a singular glove. An interesting uniform choice. This is a rapid pull. <laughs> Andrews gets down to one knee. Good cricket fielding technique to field that pull. Carpenter. Lined up laterally across the field to cutters. Some really great defense there from IBM, just Carpenter not allowing anything under from Ellipsis. They were really opened up that space in the middle of the field, waiting for someone to move into it. There goes Halden. He's going to look, and he's going to look to reset to Swan. Across to Carpenter. Low pass picked up off the toes by McGuckin. Finds Halden in the middle. Bit of a nudge from Bryce Winchester, Jack Winchester. 
Carpenter. Wide to Matthews Ooh. Hunter. <laughs> he knew where no the sideline yeah, was. No problem at all. Great field awareness there. A few signals to his teammates where he wants them to be for the throw. Halden. It's great communication on offense and awareness from the lips. there. really aware of where their teammates are going, reacting, communicating. I've been pushing them back down the field. He's kind of wondering where all these cutters are, but. Travel call. Yeah. A bit of confusion over there. Travel's typically not a stoppage if the player's still got the disc. But they're just leaving that call stand with Daly to keep the disc. Carpenter. Swan coming towards him. Andrew's coming through now. Teammates urging no backhand, of course. Oh, forces Andrew to send the forehand. McGuckin has to go. He's reeled it in. Oh, oh. He's kept that in bounds. Beautifully red. My goodness. Sam McGuckin getting large. Very happy with very happy with the uh, throw from Andrew. He's making him look good. Mm. Andrew, of course, weeks. wanting the backhand, and they just fired that forehand through the, through the gates of the two I-beam defenders, and McGuckin having to get oh down on his shoulder. He's done well. He would have been able to see that end zone line just ahead of him, so he needed to make sure he kept his body low. He kept one hand towards the ground just in case he needed the first <laughs> contact to be inbounds. He's done exceptionally well to make that look clean. And another point on the board for Ellipsis, 13-6. Chantel, what have you got for us? Here we go, Luke! Nothing? Okay. <laughs> 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 Looks like she might have been caught on the field yeah. over there. <laughs> we'll see if we've got her again. Chantel. I had a quick chat to a couple of IBM players again after their timeout. Um, they were told to tighten up their defense, uh, and they did a great job of that in the middle of the field, but it was no match for Ellipsis' Hawk. Yeah. Oh, Ellipsis racing what down. A pull. What a pull. Plenty of hang time. They've got pressure on that first pass. Labus in board to Hill. Hill winds up. Can't get a clean shot out. Recess to Lavis. Inside to Stoddard. Stoddard got a few options coming towards him. Back to the Greenfield. Prosser continuing across the field. Doherty. Sees Hill. Hill's got Stoddard on his own, but he didn't look up in time. Puts the reset out to Lavis. Lavis running it down easily. Stoddard has put in the yards this point. He's, I reckon he's covered about 150 metres, so finally has a rest as folks and labs work between them. And oh, Greeny. Greenfield ahead of Flavelle. <laughs> Cuts have dried up a bit. The intensity's died a little bit, so they're just going to have to go one at a time. Stoddard. That's Labus. Guarded closely by Lockman. Has to look forward. Prosser. And a couple of options coming towards him, but looks lateral into the hands of Stoddard. Nice swing. Oh, Lavis no. Having to get up and had a hand to it, but just couldn't quite reel it in. Ellipse is here with another chance to yeah. close this game out. Much tighter action on the mark there, just not allowing any forward movement. Again, having to force Ivy into attack at those 45 degree angles. Flavel having a look at the end zone. He's got a couple options, but and he's kept the tool in his ear saying, keep it steady. Locked him. Pops oh. it up the line, Slotter versus Favell. Favell. Oh no. Out of reach. Oh, oh. That would have been impressive. I think uh, Slotter really had the angle covered and forced Favell to have to try and go early. Go early and he was running too fast. A tricky game to play. Yep. So this drifted away from him and out of reach. First point of the day perhaps, but once you've had couple of hours of ultimate in the legs. I don't quite respond exactly how you want them to. So, Lavis to restart play. He's got everyone running away from him. <laughs> Keep your eyes on at the bottom of the screen. He'll head lateral in a moment. Oh, no. Out of the reach of Doherty into the hands of Birchett. Birchett quickly to tool it. Tool it looks to his. Oh, oh what a 
Absolute smackdown <laughs> defense from Doherty. Doherty of the hill, folks, I'm guarded. Gets a tie mark on him. Keeps low Doherty, working again. hard. Folks, as you play, come towards him, sends the ball out, start up. All oh. his own in the end zone. And I beam pegged one I back. I beam, that was beautiful. Liam Doherty, the hero of that point. His teammates rush to him. Doherty, the hero of the game at this point. I can't believe you called him a rookie. <laughs> definitely not I've showing any inexperience, really helping I beam's offense. I definitely have an apology to make <laughs> after this game. Look at this. Tula thought it was just a nice, easy reset, but he just mm. didn't see Doherty coming around his blind side. And He's quick on his feet, Doherty. Just yeah. had a great read on that. And this is bored of a backhand from oh. folks out of the reach of the defenders. and Just sat so beautifully. Stoddard collected, I think, nearly five goals now. I couldn't be that many, surely. Oh, how many have they scored? He's Seven. He's definitely <laughs> had three or four up that end alone. I beam are just not letting ellipses take this easily. Yeah. Definitely uh, winning the second half here, I beam. Yeah. Not just... No, he's just letting the game right out to the end, not at a national championships. Especially the first one we've had since 2019. Mm. And on the stream, you just can't let it go that <laughs> quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Recorded for posterity forever. You need to <laughs> need to be showing anyone who's watching that you're willing to go for as long as it takes. Nice Carpenter. pull. Let's the pull hit the ground. Copland. Okay, zone look again. Mm. Worked for them before, but will it now? Matthews Hunter. See Holden getting busy in among in the long sleeves there. Just keep your eye on him. Oh, oh and a rare fumble. Oh. Ben a Carpenter. I mean, on the doorstep of another goal. So Ryan Davies going to walk slowly to this one. They're going to try and isolate someone probably at the front of the stack here. We can see. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. For Stoddard also providing an option. Luckman as well. Great defense from the lips, isn't there? It is. Oh. There we go, Max Luckman. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> With his first goal, we were told to look for him. And there he went. It was a beautiful backhand. Sat lovely. Rob Merck with that throw. And a rare defensive line mm. goal from Ibeam <laughs> to keep the game alive. It's like you said, Simon, <laughs> they can just pull it out when it's kind of unexpected. Oh. It was a great reaction from Merck there. He didn't necessarily look to get open in any particular way. Just saw his defender's hips are pointed one way, so just went the other way. We'll have a great angle on it here. Once he turns around, Bissett was facing to the right, so he's just moved to the left. And just set it out nicely for Luckman to collect his first goal of the game. So a two-goal run here for Ibeam. Can they make it a third? Oh, I think they can. I like going for the underdogs. <laughs> to order, though, they've got... Ellipses have got their... A mix of their offensive and defensive units on. A couple of strong throwers. I think they're prepared for a bit of a zone look. We've got the Andrews and McGuckin combination. Carpenter, he's oh, another, oh. another fumble there. Gee this whiz. time, Copland. Goodness me, you Found hate it. to see it. Time to catch the elevator throw, Davey. Come on, I-beam, let's make it a third. Oh. Merck to Davey. Davey really wants that backhand down this near sideline, but can't get around McGuckin. It's inboard to Hayes. Mm, I've been looking a little bit stagnant up there in the stack. Oh. Looking for Packless. What a grab, what a monster what grab. What a grab. He's right on the corner now. Knocking on the door. Back to Davey. Davey oh, gets that backhand around. And yet another goal to Ivy. <laughs> Matthew Keeley, rookie, grabbing that one. Reeling it in. Goodness me. That's three. Come on, Ivy. We can do a fourth. Incredible run by Ivy here. Never too late for the comeback train. <laughs> three quick goals in a row. 9 13. Just enough to make Ellipsis have just to think about what they're doing. But again, they're just 
Yeah, sideline players getting around their team saying, look, just... They look like they need a little bit of a pick-me-up. Just like a nice afternoon coffee. Plenty of energy among the Newcastle squad now. They mm. made a few substitutions here, but almost largely the same line. Davey's still on there. Luckman getting back on. And as we saw this morning, Simon, energy really can win a game. Oh, it's unbelievable what it can do. They do say that having fun out there with your team is the real winner. And it reflects on the scoreboard. A huge grab from Carlos here. Look at that. Daniel. Yeah, I just want to bring up something uh, that came up in the conversation that I had with Cole Fink, coach of Ellipsis. He said that he felt that his team could beat anyone, but also they could lose to anyone as well. <laughs> I'm wondering if that duality is starting to play out on field. It's getting real interesting. There's a few of uh, very strong line called here from Ellipsis. They thought they might, a couple of players thought they might have been done for the day, but if. Uh, Lost the jackets and got back on the field, <laughs> being forced backwards now. I've been looking Bailey. like they won a fifth. Copland. Rachel, it's gone too high for Matthews Hunter. That's drifted out oh. of bounds. And here we go, here we go. Here's another chance for another break. This is exciting. <laughs> for I-beam. So the disc is going to come in on the sideline about five from goal. Rob Merck being given the responsibility. They've set their formation right in the middle of the end zone. Sturt Wilson's come out to be isolated. Head lateral to Davey. Back to Merck. Quick little one-two just to reset the count. Flipped over to Tim Hayes. Bit of a wobble on that disc. And there we oh, go. No. He's put too much. Oh, no. Too much on that one. Just got a bit too oh. cute with that lateral movement. It looked really good there. So, Ellipsis looking shaky on offense for mm. the first time this weekend. A couple of uncharacteristic early turnovers, so... Interesting to see if I-Beam can put the pressure on down here again. Tall it. Center of his own end zone. Bullet through oh, just oh, over the shoulder. Oh, there. there we go. To McGuckin. McGuckin to Andrews, all on his own. Halden. Rides the safe option. Back to Daly. Copland. They're really motoring now. Tall it. Facing a wall of emerald. Matthews Hunter centre field, 30 from goal. Copland. Oh, oh, sniffed it. <laughs> and just getting a worm burn up it. Daly unable to collect it. Ryan Davey to pick up. Winchester. Taking his time. Nice little throw to Davey's advantage. Davey to Scammell. Ooh. Scammell taking two grabs and it keeps it inbounds. Oh. Merck just calm as you like. He's got a smile on his face. He's enjoying this game. Having a good game of frisbee with the boys. Not much coming towards him. Resets to Scammell. Scammell to Davey. Hotly marked by, Ryan, by Matt Daly. Forehand bullet into Hayes. 10, 15 from goal. Everyone very close and uncontested foul by the look of it. Yep. Max Holden kicking the foot out to <laughs> So we see it on the replay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Max Holden. Might have been a strip even. Very happy to accept that foul. Hayes. Looking for Davey, puts oh, it up to his line. No. There's gonna be some traffic oh. here. Davey's come in with it. Not quite in goal though. So you'll have to walk it back, restart from where he went out of bounds. He's one Three meter from ellipsis goal. Ellipsis players to get that was an impressive effort. A little one two with Merck. Davey's still with it. Oh, Looking some... for something, anything. He might have to go over the top here. He's gone around to, to Hayes. It. Happy to lose a bit of ground there. Ooh. Merck getting up. Continues around oh, this time. Oh, yes. And that is Sturt Wilson, another veteran of the Newcastle scene, sliding in to Goodness. take I-Beam's fifth goal in a row. That's what we're talking about. I-Beam really coming out here with the energy and delivering on the scoreboard. Cat. Watching that replay, my goodness. A beautiful look through there. And a timeout call by Ellipsis. Kathy, do we dare to dream? Look, <laughs> I think we dare to dream. <laughs> the production crew here in shambles. They were hoping for an early home time today. 
But Ivim's ruined it for them. Oh, by keeping how this good game is going. This? this is ultimate at its oh. best. Saw Matt Daly's face there looking a bit forlorn as that goal was scored. So we tick over 80 minutes. Ellipsis on the screen now. Looking a little down. They know how to play this game though. I'm sure they can come back. They won't be nervous at all. They've just, even though they can see that a few goals in a row, they're not going to be... They're not going to... Nerves are not going to get to this team. They're really no, not. No, no. These guys have played as international tournaments. They've yeah. been down before. They know how they've, to do it. There's been higher stakes in other games. Just got to consolidate their efforts. What I like is they're still backing. Oh, as we this. see this again. That's... <laughs> I can't believe he got that on board. Impressive. I throw this going up. Surely this is the end of the run, but Davy is just. Oh. For it. Here we go. A bit, bit of, of energy from made. Ellipsis. As the sun's come out, might warm up their stiff muscles a bit. Couldn't ask for a better game to end the day, Simon. No, he couldn't. <laughs> oh, the excitement, energy. You can see some empty fields around us. Most, almost every other game for the day is wrapped up. It's just this one's still alive. The second whistle goes. Offense should have their hand up by now. Defense, only a few seconds left to send the pull up. Chris Hill, there on the right for I-beam. Ready to see how far he can get this one, see if we can pin ellipsis down. More than 60 from goal, he puts all his effort into that one. Gee, the where on is that. it? Oh my god! This gosh. is unbelievable, the defense is going to be there before the disc. Still floating, still floating. <laughs> Taller picks it up. We start out right there with him. Got that zone D on early. Locked That's it. what they need. Can they make it a sixth, Simon? My goodness. Taller. Oh, Taller says up. no, thank you. The Gucken. He's got Ely in the middle. Doesn't like it. Waits for the traffic to pass by. Andrews. Taller. Lots of nice little give goes. Boyle. Not too worried, happy to work with down the sideline. Not overly worried about lateral the movement. There they go now. Andrews. Toilet. Lockton. Across to Peter Ely. Finds McGuckin. Really streaking down that sideline to get that gainer. Lockman. Start out still hard on the mark. Sturt Wilson there with him. And Tim Lavis. Lips is being pushed back down the field here. Still keeping it safe. Boyle. Wanting to work through those. Plenty of voice back there from Tom Tullett just urging his young players just to sit back and wait for those opportunities don't try and create them Boyle lock them you can see them rush up just to try and let their momentum carry through the gap there and they found the gap there McGuckin Ely Lockman only seven or eight minutes to go now Boyle right on the sideline he's got a big lateral option back here with Tully you can see him down the bottom left corner Oh. But he moves forward and McGuckin oh, just sneaks it, it in. in. And they finally stopped the flow. Mm. Ellipsis 14, I-beam 10. Daniel. I just chatted quickly again with Cole Fink, coach of Ellipsis. Uh, there was a big long metaphor involving puppies and dog trainers. The long story short was that he emphasised just playing frisbee and having fun. Not overthinking it too much, yeah. just getting out there and doing what they've been doing for years now. Having fun definitely wins games. Just enjoying the privilege of getting to be, again. after the 12 months we've had, 
worldwide, just enjoying the privilege of being able to get out and play the sport they love. Mm. Ellipse is really showing their great field awareness across the team, many towing in. And we're going to cross over to Chantel now. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Um, I just had a quick chat with Ash O'Sullivan, the coach for iBeam, and he said the magic words for his team were don't give up. So hopefully we can see them continue to not give up. Back to you, Kathy. Oh, I definitely don't feel like they've given up, Shani. So they're going to, I've been going to receive this pull, so they'll be on offense. So they'll be aiming to put this one in. And meanwhile, Lipsis could end the game with a 15th goal at this point. Five more points, I've been. Come on. <laughs> Toilet sends a long floaty pull up. This is going to drift almost out of bounds, but folks is following, tracking it. Well, he's not going to catch oh, it's it, though. In bounds. Pegged in deep in dangerous Ooh. territory. Stoddard reels it in. Oh, Picks no. it up, throw it going. He can't get to oh, it. Oh. I really didn't think he had a chance, but he, he ran that very well. He'd overrun it. I think the throw just didn't get the distance mm. that was quite needed. But it was definitely the shot. He was one out with Wes Lavelle. With no other defenders nearby. Tool it to restart play. 40 from goal. Doherty on the mark. He's got James Walker oh, long. Oh, oh, oh. I'd be convinced by that fake. Lockman with the big lateral. Not much coming towards him. So he heads back. Oh, oh, he's oh, he's not really got another one. But Toilet pops the forward to Favelle. Favelle puts a big forehand up looking for Boyle. Ball has to go early. He's gone to jump it in, landed right on the line. Mm -hmm. Nope, caught him oh. before he took off. They're saying travel. Puts his foot on the goal line. Restarts play. He's open in the backcourt. Ryan Sivnadam, he's oh. popped it up at Greenfield. Can't quite a hand to it. There we go. And Ryan Sivnadam with the winning goal. Ellipse has finally closed the game out. 15-10. I-beam fought it back, but it wasn't enough. Ellipse has really deserved that win. Boy, oh boy. We were looking at down the barrel of a uh, fairly stock standard finish about half an hour ago, but I-beam absolutely made... A cracking game of us. Very enjoyable to watch, very enjoyable to follow, and I'm sure very enjoyable to play. We're going to get throw down to Chantel Jones, who's got someone from the winning team. I'm here with Dave Matthews Hunter, an ex Canberran. Congratulations on your win. What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, great to get the win. Um, absolute full credit to the boys, uh, especially the D line. Um, really, really brought the pressure early in that um, game and got us out to that nice lead. Uh, we almost pooped the pants um, in the second half there on offense. Um, they got a lot of breaks and really brought the pressure um, I beam. And we know they, yeah, never give up. So, yeah, but really good to get the win. Uh, and yeah, excited for the rest of the tournament. So what did you do in the middle to um, really get it back after I beam's a bit of a run? What, um, what were you told? How did you address that? Um, yeah, we just needed a, a timeout to sort of reset and um, brought on a really strong line, brought a lot of the D guys over actually. Um, so probably just gave the O line a bit of a rest, um, got some of those D line strong handlers, Ollie, Cupcake, um, and then a couple of yeah, really strong cutters who probably had a bit of juice in the legs. And um, yeah, we got them out there and just got it in. So. Awesome. Well, good luck for the rest of the weekend. Hopefully we'll see you uh, in the next couple of days on screen. Um, and thanks for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. We've had a great day. A quick shout out to all our camera crew, our commentators, the volunteers, our TD Anna. Um, takes a lot of people to put in the work to make this happen. Um, we look forward to seeing you back again tomorrow. We have another four games. It's gonna be another cracking day of Ultimate and we're gonna send it there. Have a great evening.